Pablo Segredo is UNEP's Associate Officer of On One Health. He's based in Brussels, uh, where he's responsible for coordinating UNEP's engagement on One Health in various initiative, initiatives with uh, EU institutions. He could not be with us, unfortunately, but he sent us this video and he's going to tell, us, tell you all about the initiatives undertaken. Hello, colleagues. My name is Pablo Sagredo, and I am the Associate One Health Officer for UNEP's regional office in Europe. It is a pleasure to provide this presentation to you all in this kickoff meeting of such an important project. It is also a pity that, can, that I cannot be following live. I'd love to be there with you. But let's get into it. Um, today, I'll be delivering a presentation on behalf of UNEP on addressing the environmental dimensions of AMR. As we know, global attention to AMR has historically been focused on human health and the agriculture sectors. But there is growing evidence that the environment plays a key role in the development, transmission, and also spread of AMR. The environmental dimensions of AMR are complex and characterized by dynamic interactions and complexities that impact global planetary health. Um, using the One Health approach, which recognizes the health of people, animals, plants, and the environment are closely linked and interdependent, we can successfully address AMR. Some countries have already adopted this approach and have included environmental related aspects into the national action plans on AMR, for example. And international organizations are taking decisions and have initiatives such as the Quadripartite Alliance for strong and coordinated action on AMR. Yet, uh, still a lot more has to be done. Let's continue. I'm sure that you're all well aware of the terrible data around AMR. Um, and But what had not been studied for a while is what was the role that the environment had in the AMR space? UNEP got a mandate to do so after UNEA 3 in 2017, where the issue of AMR and the environment was recognized, requesting a report on the environmental impacts of AMR and the causes of the development and spread of resistance in the environment, including the gaps in understanding of those impacts and causes. Therefore, UNEP delivered and, and this report was launched at the sixth meeting of the Global Leaders Group on Antimicrobial Resistance in February 2023 in Barbados. This is the most comprehensive report on the subject and calls for priority action to address key pollution sources from poor sanitation, sewage, community and municipal waste, healthcare delivery, pharmaceuticals manufacturing, intensive crop, and terrestrial and aquatic animal production sectors. So we know that the environmental dimensions of AMR are complex. Therefore, to understand the development, transmission, and spread of AMR in the environment, it's imperative to view it through a multidimensional lens. And it's important to say again that the environment is strongly present in these three stages of AMR, development, transmission, and spread. It is also important to say that AMR challenges cannot be understood or addressed separately from the triple planetary crisis of climate change, biodiversity loss, and pollution and waste. Fueled by population growth, urbanization, growing demand for food and healthcare, we can also expect an increase in the use of antimicrobials and pollutant releases into the environment. The climate crisis has numerous impacts on ecosystems, human health, animal health, and food production, which affect AMR. Biodiversity and a fully functional ecosystem is critical for planetary health, and, in, and antimicrobials potentially threaten the health of ecosystems. It's important to note that high microbial diversity can act even as a biological barrier to resist the spread of AMR. That's the link to biodiversity. And AMR genes are increasingly being recognized as emerging contaminants and contaminated environments can become sources of AMR. UNEP's report um, also gives us a clear picture of the sectors and value chains that have bigger influence on AMR the pharmaceutical industry, agriculture and food production, and the healthcare systems being the main drivers that potentiate AMR in the environment. Another one to take into account also is municipal waste and wastewater systems, which play a big role. So the report not only gives us a rundown of the evidence available, but also provides priority actions that we can begin working on. Um, it highlights the need to enhance environmental planning and governance between AMR and the environmental sector, which would have to happen in a bi-directional way. Um, it also highlights the need to take into account legal and regulatory frameworks. Uh, it mentions international standards for effluent discharge, national regulatory changes, um, industry and private sector engagement. It also identifies the need for identification and targeting of priority AMR relevant pollutants um, and to address the key sectors for this prevention that is so needed. Um, and mentions the need to improve reporting, surveillance and monitoring. And last but not least, uh, the need to prioritize financing, innovation and capacity development. So I believe it's also important to uh, highlight that AMR is included in UNEP's midterm strategy. 
Um, this comes after a request from the member states themselves to include AMR in UNEP's chemical and pollution action, um, which, I mean, strongly underlines the importance of this matter for member states. So just to give you a little bit more information about uh, UNEP's work on AMR, uh, I will say that currently UNEP has an AMR strategy and is working on AMR in several fronts. Um, we've been carrying out uh, technical work um, and are involved in projects around the world, uh, some of these alongside the Global Environment Facility. So at a regional and country level, UNEP is advocating and amplifying the, M the AMR messaging, of course. Uh, we are working with member states, uh, such as India, and at a regional level, we are involved, for example, in the analysis of the integration of uh, the environmental dimensions of AMR in the African National Action Plans on AMR. Um, and we are also mapping the environmental dimensions of AMR related actions in, in Latin America. Um, UNEP continues to raise awareness, of course, and we continue informing and influencing decision making bodies to include AMR into the environmental agenda and also vice versa. Lastly, I would like to come back to the idea of AMR needing to be tackled from a multidimensional lens, which the One Health approach provides. Um, for this, UNEP joined in 2022 the One Health tripartite, now quadripartite, uh, which has identified AMR as one of its priorities. This alignment underscores the imperative of addressing AMR through a comprehensive approach, um, shaping these collective efforts towards combating this pressing global challenge that we have in hand. And I'll leave it there. Uh, happy to take any questions on behalf of UNEP. Uh, for that, you can always reach out to me via the email that I believe is visible on the screen. And thank you all very much.